Your life, you're gonna own nothing. You own three things, okay? You own your fitness, you own your thoughts and emotions. What's that? What? What's big? It was a big one. Big what? Fly. Don't, oh. be, don't be saying that shit, Jess. You made me think it's a fucking bee. What's going on, guys? It's Abdullah from the Glucose Network bringing you another fucking video like another day in the park. We're out here in Melbourne today changing fucking lives, cunt. I'm about to drop a q and I put a fucking post up a couple hours ago on Instagram saying I do a Q&A and drop it on the channel tonight. So here we go. Matt, Jess, I get these cunts saying, Abdullah, what do you do for a living? I change fucking lives for a living, bro. That's what I fucking do. I don't know what you do, but I change lives. What made you originally go plant-based, aka vegan? I think she means vegan. What made you go vegan? Vegan, right? I would be a fucking liar if I sat here and told you guys I stopped eating animals and shit because of animal cruelty. To me, it was more so a product of my environment. I ended up spending a lot of time with dudes who rode bikes and dudes who didn't eat meat and stuff. Eventually, I hang out with them enough and I just made the switch. Before that, I was never a big meat eater or anything. Remember this shit, Jess? What happened was, bro, I used to live in this apartment. I couldn't be fucked cleaning my pan. Everyone knows I used to have the dirtiest fucking pan. And what happened was, bro, is I never used the pan. Once the pan got so dirty, it was like no turning fucking back, bro. It was like Neo taking that red pill in the fucking Matrix, bro. No turning back. So I was like, you know what? I can't cook on this fucking pan no more. I can't be fucked. I'm too lazy. I'm too fat. I, can't, I don't have fucking time. I found myself like struggling to like go buy chicken and shit and cook it. And then I'd end up going and get rotisserie chicken from the supermarket. And everyone was like, Abdullah, don't eat rotisserie chicken. It's the most disgusting thing. And then I just eventually stopped eating rotisserie chicken and was just eating like egg whites and shit. So it wasn't really hard for me to drop the eggs and all that stuff, bro. It was pretty fucking easy. Back then I was fucking with heaps of whey protein. It got too expensive. So I fucking dropped it. The pan was so dirty, bro. If you saw this pan, dude, it would make your grandma faint. It was fucking disgusting. A combination of all things, bro. It was a product of my environment. It was the fact that even before I was put in that environment, I wasn't eating much like meat, chicken, animal products anyway. I was pretty much vegetarian for like almost a year before that. Yeah, I had every now and again, I'd have meat like when I was out and about, but I would never buy meat. I would fuck all. I found myself like going out of my way to buy chicken and shit. So the thing is when you make a switch like that, it kind of opens your eyes up to a whole different way of thinking about shit. So then after you can kind of step back and go, oh wow, like, you know, this shit actually does happen to the animals and all this stuff. Opinions on carb cycling. Bro, I think carb cycling is a fucking joke, dude. Who wants to fucking have one day when they eat hella fucking carbs and feel like a fucking sick cunt and the next day wake up and be fucking eating fuck all carbs? It's like cunts who change their macros on their off day and shit. Fuck that. Cunts don't realize it's an average over the whole fucking week. You may as well just average out your fucking carbs the whole week and then just hit that number every day. What is the point in carb fucking cycling, cunt? Eat as many carbs as you want to eat every fucking day. Day. I don't have time to cycle carbs, bro. The only thing I have time to cycle, cunt, is my fucking bike. My opinions on carb cycling is it's a load of fucking shit. And if you're the type of cunt who's going to sit there and start carb cycling, get off the couch, bro. Every cunt I know that carb cycles, you're doing nothing with yourself to lead you to the point of wanting to carb cycle. Do you know what I mean, Jess? We're in 20 fucking 15, cunt. You're like, it's like saying, like, should I eat carbs before bed? Eat a box of cereal before bed, bro. I don't give a fuck. No one carb cycles no more. And if they do carb cycle, I'm like, bro, like... What the fuck is going on with you, cunt? What are you doing all day? Are you sitting on the fucking couch jacking off watching Jenna Hayes videos doing nothing with your life so then you mentally stumbled across the idea of like carb cycling? Did I get my point across there, Jess? If you're doing like an every other day carb cycle, bro, add up all your carbs every day for seven days, divided by seven, you'll get the average and then you can have a consistent carb intake. How many times a week do you get baked? Slash, stone, slash, whatever you fucking call it. And do you think it hinders gains? I don't get baked. I got high twice this year. I don't think it should be a regular part of your life. If you got fucking issues, bro, don't be smoking no weed. Sort out your fucking issues. Don't use the fucking dope as like a fucking band-aid, bro. I don't think you should be doing any drugs, but I live in the real world, dude, where hookers suck dick for cash and dudes want to smoke weed to, you know, have a good time. Point is, if you can't have a good time without weed, you'll never have a good time. It's like being happy. If you can't be happy right now, you'll never be fucking happy. I've never really met a functional stoner, dude. I know apparently they're out there. I never see someone who gets high as fuck all the time getting shit done. Now, I know all you cunts can be like, oh yeah, dude, there's fucking cunts out there that do that shit. Fuck off, bro. Until I see one, this is my fucking opinion. I think if you are going to smoke weed, bro, smoke it very not often. Would you ever consider going back to uni? I say fuck uni because I don't need to go to uni, bro. To do what I want to do, aka land parks, talk to you, change fucking lives on the daily cunt, I don't need to go to uni. If for some fucking weird reason, bro, you grew up and you wanted to be a fucking dentist, bro, and dentists need to go to uni to be a fucking dentist, bro, well then go to fucking uni, dude. But for me, there's no real reason I need to go to, why go back, like, to what? Go get a business degree to tell me how to make YouTube videos? I feel like 
I don't ever need to go back to uni simply because the shit I want to do in life doesn't require me to go to uni. Bro, in the world we live in, if the thing that you want to fucking do requires you to go to uni, well, bro, you need to go to uni. Okay, so if you want to be an engineer and that's your fucking passion, your fucking passion, not your mom's passion, not your dad's passion, not your fucking grandma's boyfriend's fucking passion, go to uni and do what you need to do to get where you want to get. For me to get where I want to get, it's like uni takes me away from that. It's not, it's not pushing me in the right direction. It's pulling me away from that, dude. So that's why I don't go to uni. How do you get into the zone for lifting, i.e. do you talk to yourself, pace around ETC. Your own preference and tips for others who have trouble. Big, he's so cute. Just what type of dog is that? Frenchy. I'm a big proponent of calm lifting, just being calm. If you always draw upon anger, frustration, all this stuff just to perform your lifts, what happens when it's not there? You're not gonna be able to perform and it's unhealthy every time to go into the gym to try and get angry about lifting the weights. There's no point in doing that, dude. You need to be calm. Practice being calm. It might take a while to be calm. The zone to me and the zone to you should be, the zone should be empty thoughts, no thoughts, just execution like a fucking robot. So practice getting into the zone of the robot. When you step onto the platform, it's time to lift weights. Be sitting down. You can be on fucking Instagram for all I give a fuck. There's no need to chuck your fucking phone down, put on the fucking headphones, walk around listening to, I don't know, what's a hell fucking aggressive, some Metallica fucking type shit. Think about fuck the world, hate the world. You know, I was fat and had titties when I was in high school and everyone bull bullied me. Don't do that. Put your phone down, walk up. Your set might start as you walk onto the platform. The set has begun. You have but fucking begun the set and there's no fucking thoughts and emotions when you begin the set. You're a fucking robot. Inputs and outputs. You're either going or you're not going. That's all there is to it. Like I said before, bro, the more you draw upon like anger and frustration and be this angry lifter, what happens when that anger's not there? It's gonna be like, oh my God, like the anger's not there. You're gonna feel like a little bitch. So don't rely on anger or any form of, and then dude, once you start relying on stuff like emotion to execute lifts, it's like when there's no emotion, you won't execute lift. I'd rather feel nothing than feel happy or sad. What happens if I always rely on feeling happy? Well, when I feel sad, I'm not gonna hit the lift. What happens if I always rely on being angry to hit the lift? What happens when I'm feeling happy and I can't get angry? I'm not gonna be able to hit the fucking lift. So the point is, feel fucking nothing. Just, just be okay with feeling nothing when you lift. Don't pace around. That's mental energy being wasted. You're getting hyped up. Your central nervous system is getting pumped up. You're wasting a lot of nervous energy. So always be calm. Look at all these, you know, Chinese weightlifters, dude, like that. When they're lifting, they're not like pacing around, slaps in the face. That's some type of powerlifting shit for fucking fat powerlifters who just don't know how to control their thoughts and emotions. How to overcome being scared of the future. Once my mum told me this, right? And my mum is the smartest motherfucking girl on the whole fucking planet, bro. Now, I'm going to give a shout out to all the mums out there. She said, the past will paralyze you and the future will consume you. If you're holding on to shit on the past, it's gonna paralyze you because you can't let go, so therefore you can't move forward. And if you sit there thinking about the fucking future all the time, it's gonna consume you. You're gonna be sitting here not acting on today because you're scared or you're consumed about what's happening in the future. I mean, you're so concerned about the end point or like what's gonna to happen tomorrow or the day after that you forget about today, what you can do today. What you do now is gonna shape your fucking future and that's all you have to look at it. What I do today, the thoughts I act upon today, what I do in the given moment, let's use me for an example. What I do today will shape my future on YouTube, right? So I can't sit here be just thinking about the future all day on YouTube. It's gonna consume me, all these other things I can do, all these other plans, or oh, this might not be a good plan. What about this plan? What about this plan? Or I'll get too scared, or like what happens if I don't make it? Well, hey bro, the future is determined about my, what my actions are today, especially what my actions are in this given fucking moment. That's why I'm making this fucking video. So don't be scared of the future. Realize your future is created by that given moment. So always live in the fucking moment. Do what you wanna do in that moment, and that is gonna shape your future. So know where you want to get. That's all you need to know. Know where you want to get. That's as far as you need to think. This is where I want to be. The summation of every single moment, every single choice in that fucking day, bro, is what's going to get you to that fucking point. Key point there was, dude, you need to live in the moment because all you can do is act upon the given moment and that's what's going to shape your future. It's scary as fuck to think about the future. I don't need to think about the future. The only thing I think about is what I'm thinking about fucking right now. I'm not thinking about the word I'm about to fucking say next, bro. That's why I'm so fucking smooth on the fucking mic bro i'm not thinking about what i'm going to say next i let it roll off the top of my fucking head i'm living in the fucking moment dude and that's what's going to shape this fucking video i'm not thinking about oh my god how the, how is this video going to look when it's done bro i can't worry about that shit the only thing i can fucking worry about bro is what i'm going to say in the moment dude and that's how the video is going to turn out the fucking best every single time about i think about how the video is going to turn out so much that video ends up being fucking shit because i wasn't being there in the fucking moment be in the fucking moment and the future work itself out that's for every single motherfucker watching this shit. I'm sick of hearing these kinds of, oh, but what happens if that fails?
I was have a backup plan. Fuck the backup plan. There is no need for a backup plan if you always live in the fucking present moment. You always work in the fucking present moment. That's how it is. Vegan Gains Dream Rider Joey Carbs from fuck one, marry one, kill one. Vegan Gains is growing on me. He's less of a little whiny fucking bitch these days. So, but I'd still definitely kill Vegan Gains. Out of them three, I would definitely shoot that cunt. Me and Joey get along really well. We have some deep conversations. And if I was going to spend any, the rest of my life with anyone, it would be Joey. I would definitely marry Joey. And I would fuck Dream Rider. And I'd make sure I fucked him like I was fucking someone in jail who just bent up. I'd make sure I fucked him. And I think he'd enjoy it too. Do you ever wipe your ass and get shit on your fingers because you're trying to save the planet by using less paper? To be honest with you, dude, I got my shit so efficient now. Over the last, my whole lifespan, I'm just getting more efficient at shitting and having a really clean asshole when I shit. So it's not really a big problem with me getting shit on my fingers. Because 90% of the time when I take a shit, it's in the morning. So I take a shit in the morning and then I just hop in the fucking shower, bro, and cut that shit with water. Even though, bro, my asshole's pristine after I shit. You watching, you could lick my asshole after and it'd be cleaner than your fucking dinner plate before you put fucking food on it. Bro. See what I mean, Jess? And also, I got that shit pat down, bro. So I take a shit, and then I'm in the shower. Same thing at night, I take a shit, and then I'm in the fucking shower. So my asshole's clean 24 o'clock and 7. I'm on that fucking dope diet. They my ass, you know, I have the dopest shits, Jess. Do you guys ever feel like that? Like, you just feel like you're shitting a million bucks? That's me, bro. I'm, I'm not like sloppy, diarrhea, shit on the ass cheeks and stuff. I'm not like that, bro. Not anymore, at least. That's the end of the first part of the Q&A. Obviously, I can't answer all the questions in one video. We'll be here till the fucking sun goes down. Expect a vlog coming out in two days fucking time. Shout out to all you fucking carb killers watching this shit. We're taking over. This is the carb revolution, bro. And we're going straight to the top. I'm taking out all the head honchos on YouTube, bro. I fucking swear. I would be so fucking scared if you had a channel that was bigger than mine. Because I'm coming to chop your head off fucking ISIS fucking style, bro. Allahu Akbar. That's the end of the fucking video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, share with your mom, share with your sister, we from Spouse. We support fucking game manager. Hope you do follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Shout out to my boy, fucking H. Like, I'll see you on the fucking tube tomorrow. Peace. Yeah. Project, Cirrus, Jess, Tommy Evans, Bullcat Anthem. What you more than pretenders? Yeah. I'll stop you in your tracks if you start with me. We ran so bad they clog your arteries. I'm so inventive with my artistry. I break ground like earthquakes and I said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend.